Yeah, we can start soon. Okay, I'm not seeing on the screen. Uh, actually, the screen is put on share mode right now. Okay, so ask her to go. How would you want? I can start with without that also, no issues. Yeah, okay, you can start. I put you on spotlight so everyone else can see. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can, I can, I can. Everyone can. Okay. Okay. A very good afternoon to all and welcome to the 13th session of this coach development program initiated by Sports Authority of India and Table Tennis Federation of India. Dear friend, yesterday we had our Honorable Minister for Sports, Mr. Kiran Rijuju, who came. It was a great moment for all of us and he has clearly mentioned the vision that he has not only for sports in India but for table tennis in particular. And it's really a moment of joy for all the table tennis fraternity. What he spoke about table tennis, he himself is, has played table tennis and would love to continue playing table tennis and he has extended all possible support for table tennis and that's a very, very good news for all of us. There's one more news that he mentioned is that Sports Authority of India is going to recruit coaches. So it's a wonderful thing for coaches because we all know that we, to develop the game in our country, which is so huge and so diverse, we need a lot of coaches with good knowledge who can pass on the knowledge and create players all over the country, which will only enhance the grassroots, the base of our sport and also higher level of champions. So with all those good words in this difficult time, it's really very heartening and encouraging for all of us. Like every day, I would like to also mention certain things which were pointed out by Mr. Sharma yesterday. This is a very serious talk. We are having legendary and exceptional people from all over the world coming to talk and giving their knowledge. And getting knowledge is one of the best part. We must also maintain discipline. We are all sports persons, so discipline comes very natural to all of us. And we have to display them. Few suggestions and a request to all of you all. Please ensure that when your video mode is on, you are properly dressed because it's all serious talk. You need to pay attention, keep your focus so that you can grasp what is being told. There should not be any movement behind you. If you are expecting any movement or any such disturbance, then it's better that you put a video off and you can be on audio so that is it doesn't disturb and doesn't look bad of table tennis to all, all those who are watching. Secondly, all the side coaches will put in their name and the place of hosting as soon as they join and they will wait till the meeting is over, this talk is over, till they get the instruction to leave the meeting, they will be on the meeting. Others will leave the meeting once they are told to leave the meeting. We are also having with us evaluator Manju Shidayanan. She is the Deputy Director with Sports Authority of India. She will be watching the screens and seeing and that our behavior that is seen on the screen will also be one of the points which she will be evaluating. So it is a request to entire table tennis fraternity that we need to develop table tennis in all ways, including giving the best impression about us. So please take these talks seriously because all these people who are coming are really coming to enhance your skill. It's for your benefit. So please take that benefit with these few words. Now, I would like to introduce today's speaker. She is a very illustrious player having a fantastic career. She is Alina Timina from Holland. She is five times Olympian. Well, five times Olympian, out of which four times as a player and once as a coach. She has been a European champion and a World Cup winner, which is excellently high in 1994. And she has played quarterfinals of the women's doubles in two Olympic Games. That is 1992 and 1996. Her highest world ranking was 29. She has also been a coach with teams in UTT. And right now she is a coach of one of the reputed clubs of Holland. And she has consented and agreed to 
share her speciality that is how to play developing defensive style players and how to play against them so without wasting any time alina first and foremost thank you on behalf of sports authority of india table tennis federation of india and all the participants from india for your valuable time and the knowledge that you're going to share with us in spite of all your busy schedule and you being stuck at the holland and some of your equipment stuck in switzerland it's really a honor to have you with us it's all over to you alina hello kamlesh uh, hello everybody to start with uh, i want to, to uh, say my big thanks for you kamlesh for inviting me to this program and uh, not only the speaker i was following uh, quite a few sessions uh, up till now and uh, uh, that was amazing i've learned a lot and yesterday like you said it was a special day uh, when minister of sport was there uh, giving his speech which is which i found very very encouraging uh, i have to say uh, i've been talking to a lot of players and coaches in all these years when i was active in table tennis like a lot of years alina can you be a little louder louder Sorry, alina can you be a little okay louder? Uh, can you hear me now is it better yeah this is better thank you okay in this uh, i've i've been uh, active uh, i'm still active in table tennis sport for many many years and i have to say such uh, government support like table tennis in india enjoying now is very unusual and i think uh, yeah it's a big privilege to enjoy this support and um, i guess that will help indian table tennis to yeah to win medal at olympics eventually okay um now coming back to my topic can you see me good kamlesh now am i yeah, uh, yeah, yeah? this is good. absolutely clear yes the slide is very clear okay uh, my topic today will be developing defensive style players and how to play against them uh there are two reasons why i have chosen this topic for today first one is uh that, that it is my speciality that uh, what i was doing all, all my life and i'm coming uh, originally uh out of russia and uh, there are a lot of good defenders and coaches who are specialized in working with defenders so uh, i'm coming from environment where uh, defense style is actually very common and the second reason is uh, in my first uh, season when i was coaching uh, ultimate table tennis league team uh, in the first season in the uh, quite a few of uh, women participants Uh, foreign participants they were uh, defenders and uh, then uh, one thing struck my attention uh, that indian players who were playing really really good they still uh, their level uh, was uh, level of game was not as good against defensive players as against attacking players and uh, uh that's actually the second reason why i uh decided to take this topic because uh my statement actually is i uh, deeply believe that the only way to be able to play against defenders if when you practice against them and i guess this is not the situation at this moment in india because i think well just correct me uh, kamlesh if it's not true i don't think you have uh, enough defenders to practice uh, against it's absolutely right what you're saying yeah uh, the thing is uh, I, i can give a small uh, example because maybe some coaches are thinking that uh, 
defense uh, game is uh, yeah it, it is more uh, is, is used more in women table tennis that's true but I think uh, there are still enough defenders uh, in men table tennis which can spoil your life I have a small example uh, to one of the Olympic qualifications, which I was playing myself, I think it was Olympic qualification uh, before London. Well, I might be mistaken, it would be before uh, Olympic qualification before Beijing, but I think before London. Uh, we were talking um, with French coaches, and uh, that was the qualification when uh, Simon Gauzy didn't qualify for Olympic Games. And uh, well, the only reason uh, why he didn't uh, qualify is because he, in the draw, he met a defense player. And at this moment of his career, Simon Gozi was not good uh, yet in, uh, against defense. And, uh, well, I, I guess he changed it now. But even for such a big players, uh, defense can be a difficult yeah, a difficult thing to play against. Talking about the women table tennis, uh, this different story. There are too many defenders, and uh, if you want to win a good big tournament, most of the times, or you have very very lucky, most of the times you have to play at least against one good defender. Okay, so let's talk about why it is difficult to play against defenders. Uh, to start with, defenders and attackers, they're <laughs> two different sort of people. Uh, we have, uh, they're thinking differently. That's, the, that's very important. I will uh, mention now some things which are different and then later in my uh, presentation, I will go deeply in uh, every one of these things. Uh, defenders uh, have a different mindset. Uh, I think the biggest difference is that attack, attacking players, they want to win the point. Defenders, on the other side, they want to create situation that attacker make mistakes. So this is really big difference in mindset. Uh, I, uh, like I said, a little bit later, I will go deeper in all of these uh, small topics. Uh, technical elements which defenders are using are obviously different as well. Uh, footwork, Timing, we need to take the ball a little later in general. Strategy, the strategy of the matches uh, uh, which, uh, which defenders are building is very, very different to the strategy which attackers are using. And like you see uh, in my, uh, on this page, even physical qualities are different. Uh, Defenders in general need to have more endurance. They have to play longer, uh, longer matches. So you have to prepare the, uh, them physically differently as well. Maybe you can translate, Kamlesh? Yes, absolutely. It's clear. I can translate to this much. Uh, thank you, uh, Alina. First of all, Alina has told us that she has seen these sessions. आज वो पहली बार बोलने आ रहे हैं लेकिन वो अगले दो तीन सेशन भी काफी सेशन उन्होंने देखे हैं और उनको बहुत अच्छा लगा है और उनकी ह्यूमिलिटी देखो इतने बड़े प्लेयर इतने बड़ी कोच होने के बावजूद भी ये वो कहती है कि इन सेशन से उन, उन्हें कुछ सीखने को मिला है और उन तारीफ की है ये स्कीम की कि इस कठिन घड़ी में जहाँ पे सब लोग घर में बैठे हुए तो ये ये जो इनिशिएटिव है उसने बहुत तारीफ की है और कल उन्होंने हमारे मिनिस्टर की स्पीच सुनी और वो कहती है कि बहुत ही एंकरेजिंग था टेबल टेनिस के लिए और इससे डेफिनेटली भारतीय टेबल टेनिस को बहुत बहुत 
फायदा होगा और ओलंपिक में मेडल जीतना बिल्कुल संभव हो सकता है जिस तरह से उन्होंने अपना सपोर्ट टिबेटन्स के लिए बताया था तो ऐसा सपोर्ट वो कहती है कि बहुत जरूरी है तो अगर इस इस लेवल पे अगर आपको परफॉर्म करना है तो ये टिबेटनिस हमारे भारतीय टिबेटनिस वालों के लिए सब बहुत बहुत अच्छी बात है और आज का जो टॉपिक उन्होंने सिलेक्ट किया है वो उन्होंने दो रीजन बताए हैं कि क्योंकि सिलेक्ट किया है एक तो वो खुद डिफेंसिव प्लेयर रह चुकी है तो उसकी ये स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉइंट है उसके ये फोर्टे है क्योंकि उनको ये डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स के माइंड में क्या होता है उसके बारे में बहुत अंदर से बहुत ज्यादा डिटेल में पता है और दूसरी बात है कि वो जब यू में कोच होकर आई थी तो पहली बार में फर्स्ट सीजन में काफी चौपिंग चौपर्स प्लेयर्स थे डिफेंसिव प्लेयर जो कहते हैं जो टेक्निकली उसे चौपर्स भी कहते हैं जो अलग अलग वुमेन ने खास करके चौपर्स काफी थे तो उन्होंने देखा कि इंडियन प्लेयर्स जब वो अटैकिंग प्लेयर के सामने खेलते थे तो उनका टेक्निक अच्छा था उनके साथ वो अच्छी तरह से परफॉर्म करते थे लेकिन जब कोई अच्छा चौपर आता था वो सामा उनके साथ अच्छा नहीं खेल पाते थे तो उनका ये कहना था क्योंकि वो उनको चौपर प्लेयर के साथ प्रैक्टिस करने के मौके ही कम मिलते थे तो उनको उसकी टेक्निक डेवलप नहीं हुई थी उसके साथ खेलने की और अगर आपको चौपिंग प्लेयर है डिफेंसिव प्लेयर से आपको खेलने को सीखना है तो टेक्निकली लीग आप थियोरेटिकली आप खुद भी बता सकते हैं लेकिन सबसे आसान तरीका ये है कि आपको चौपिंग चौप प्लेयर्स के साथ या तो डिफेंसिव प्लेयर के साथ बहुत ज्यादा प्रैक्टिस करनी पड़ेगी ताकि आपको उनकी टाइमिंग वगैरह का आइडिया अंदाजा आए और आपको टेक्निक डेवलप कर सके और बहुत से कोचेस का ये मानना है कि चौपिंग जो गेम है वो सिर्फ वुमेन में ज्यादा इफेक्टिव है मेन में नहीं लेकिन ऐसी बात नहीं है बहुत से कंट्री में बहुत से अच्छे में डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स हैं जो अच्छा कर रहे हैं और एग्जांपल भी दिया है कि सिमोन गोजी हम सब जानते हैं एक बहुत बढ़िया खिलाड़ी है बहुत टॉप नॉच का खिलाड़ी है वो एक ओलंपिक्स में क्वालिफाई नहीं हो पाया गया सिंपल रीजन ये था कि वो अटैकिंग प्लेयर के साथ तो अच्छा खेलते थे लेकिन उनके जो क्वालिफाइंग स्टेज में ड्रॉ में एक डिफेंसिव प्लेयर आ गया और डिफेंसिव से वो इतने प्रैक्टिस में नहीं थे उसकी उनकी डिफेंस के साथ खेलने की टेक्निक अच्छी नहीं थी इसलिए वो डिफेंसिव प्लेयर के साथ वो हार गए और उनकी और एक उन्होंने कहा था कि उन्होंने डिफेंसिव प्लेयर क्यों बने तो वो बेसिकली रशिया से है और रशिया में उस वक्त बहुत से चॉपिंग वुमेन साइड पे चॉपर्स बहुत थे और वहाँ पे कोचेस भी बहुत थे जिनको चॉपर्स को कैसे प्लेयर्स को कैसे डेवलप करना उसका ज्ञान था एक्सपीरियंस था और टेक्निक भी अच्छी तरह जानते थे और वहाँ पे एनवायरमेंट ऐसा था कि वो उस वक्त चॉपर अपने सीनियर्स को देख के भी हम जैसे कॉपी करते थे उसी तरह से उसकी वजह से वो चॉपर डिफेंसिव प्लेयर बने और शुरुआत की स्लाइड में उन्होंने सब पॉइंट्स दिए है कि डिफेंसिव प्लेयर किस तरह से अटैकिंग प्लेयर के साथ डिफरेंट होता है तो दो पॉइंट उन्होंने कवर किए हैं एक है माइंड मतलब एटीट्यूड जो होता है कि अटैकिंग प्लेयर हमेशा अपॉर्चुनिटी ढूंढ के अटैक करके पॉइंट जीतना चाहता है उसकी ये अटैकिंग होती है कैसे भी तरह पॉइंट अटैक करे जीते और डिफेंसिव प्लेयर का जनरली वेट एंड वॉच जैसा सिस्टम होता है वो ओपोनेंट को क्रिएट करता है कि ओपोनेंट गलती करे तो वो ओपोनेंट की गलती पे वो निर्भर होते हैं तो ये बेसिक डिफरेंस है और टेक्निकल एलिमेंट्स में बहुत डिफरेंस है जैसे कि फुटवर्क है टाइमिंग स्ट्रैटेजी फिजिकल फिटनेस रिक्वायरमेंट एक्सरसाइजेस ये सारी कुछ बहुत डिफरेंट है और ये चीज की डिटेल में वो हमें आप बाद में बताएंगे और फिजिकल क्वालिटी सिर्फ मेंटल एटीट्यूड नहीं बट फिजिकल क्वालिटी भी उसी तरह डिफेंसिव प्लेयर की डेवलप करनी पड़ती है यस अलीना यू कैन in uh, uh, 2017 this is the world ranking uh, well the pla- uh, uh, the placement of the defen- defensive players of the world ranking at this time so as you can see uh, all the players who are this is w- women players uh, defensive players uh, all of them all coming from the uh, asian a- education system all from uh, uh, yeah former soviet union russia education system uh, on the right side uh, less nice picture but still it's uh, it is correct i made it yesterday and if you look at it uh, in the terms of the countries where uh, defenders were brought up 
this exactly the same story. This except of the uh, Linda Bergstrom, which is uh, from Sweden, but uh, well, great achievement for, from her to get in top hundred. But this is more exception, which is actually uh, supporting the rule. Still, at this moment, uh, the, uh, only few countries are still bringing up and world class defenders. Uh, why does it happen? You can read that, but it is uh, well, actually all obvi obvious. There is not sufficient knowledge by coaches. And uh, I was surprised, I was uh, preparing this uh, presentation. I was looking for some extra information on internet, uh, trying to bring my knowledge a little bit up to date. There are hardly any articles, hardly any tutorials uh, for the coaches how to develop defenders. Uh, there are no programs, well, at least I don't know, I'm not aware of them, that focus on defenders uh, in general. I know that, for example, in China, in every uh, uh, training center, even in every club, there are in every training group, there is at least one or two defenders on every level, uh, and there are special coaches who are specialized in working with defenders. And I think, I guess, at this moment in Japan and Korea, that probably would be the same situation, but not outside of these countries. Uh, in general, maybe for this sort of reasons, or maybe uh, it's historically happened like this, uh, offensive way of playing seems to be more favorite, especially by young children. Uh, and uh, the last thing, there is no sufficient, not enough in any way, sufficient materials, uh, like an educational materials, like books or articles about defense way of playing, and for example, about choosing the material for defenders, which is very important. Uh, so I think, and I was talking with an, uh, uh, Nevin Gegner about that. He's, an, uh, uh, he's responsible for coaching education in the, uh, by uh, European Table Tennis Federation. I think some things has, have to be changed. Uh, I think we need to uh, give a, a structure in uh, uh, educating of coaches and uh, who can educate Defenders. <laughs> uh, Kamlesh, if you want, you can translate because I will go to other slides. In a sure. Thank you, Alina. That was very nice. Uh, Alina, आगे बताती है कि women की उन्होंने एक data निकाला है जिनमें आपने ranking दिखाई कि जो women के chop defensive players हैं मैं अभी सिर्फ defensive player use करूँगा क्योंकि defensive और chopper में शायद कोई confusion हो जाए इसलिए defend defenders कि जो वुमेन प्लेयर में जरा ज्यादा है वो उसने पहले ही बताया है और उनकी रैंकिंग में बताया है कि कितना महत्वपूर्ण है डिफेंसिव प्लेयर के साथ सीखना क्योंकि अगर आप किसी भी आई टी टी एफ टूर्नामेंट बड़ी टूर्नामेंट को जीतना है आपको वर्ल्ड लेवल प्लेयर बनना है तो ये आप मान के चलना है कि आपको एक अच्छा डिफेंडर तो जरूर मिलेगा अगर अगर आप उसको आप जल्दी ड्रॉ में मिल जाते हैं तो आप जैसे सोमन सीमन दोजी को हो गया वैसे हो सकता है तो आपको डिफेंसिव प्लेयर के साथ प्रैक्टिस करना बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है अगर आपके पास डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स नहीं है जैसे उन्होंने बताया कि डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स एक वर्ल्ड में माइनॉरिटी है क्योंकि तो ज्यादातर लोग अटैकिंग यंगस्टर्स को अटैकिंग प्लेयर होना अच्छा लगता है डिफेंसिव प्लेयर होना प्रेफर नहीं करते और उनका ये कहना है कि आज डिफेंसिव प्लेयर को इतना डेवलप हुआ नहीं है क्यों या तो कम प्लेयर्स क्यों है उसका उसने रीजन बताया है सबसे पहला रीजन तो ये समझती है कि कि कोचिज सिखाने वाले जो है 
उनको बहुत कम कोचेज है जिनको चौकिंग डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स को ट्रेन करने की नॉलेज है या एक्सपीरियंस है सेकेंडली कोचेज को अगर नॉलेज नहीं है तो उसको नॉलेज मिलने के लिए हम कहीं ना कहीं गूगल करते हैं कुछ भी करते हैं या तो आई टी की वेबसाइट पर जाते तो वहाँ भी हमें डिफेंसिव प्लेयर को क्या करना चाहिए कैसे करना चाहिए उसके बारे में इंफॉर्मेशन है आर्टिकल्स है बुक्स है बहुत कम अवेलेबल है और इतने डिटेल में नहीं है इसकी वजह से ये एक बहुत बड़ा कारण है और उनका सुझाव है कि ऐसा कुछ क्रिएट करना चाहिए ताकि ये एक जो डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स की जो माइनॉरिटी प्लेयर्स है बहुत जरूरी भी है इनको बढ़ावा मिले उन्होंने एग्जांपल दिया है चाइना का जहाँ हम सब जानते हैं कि चाइना टेबल टेनिस में सबसे ऊंचा है तो उसका कार, एक कारण ये है कि चाइना में सभी प्लेयर्स जो चौपिंग डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स के साथ बहुत अच्छा खेलते हैं चाइना में हर एक क्लब हर एक ट्रेनिंग से ग्रुप में भी एक डिफेंसिव प्लेयर जरूर होता है और स्पेशल कोचेज है उनके पास जो ये इस तरह के प्लेयर्स को ट्रेन करने में माहिर है उनको नॉलेज है एक्सपीरियंस है उसी तरह जापान और कोरिया में भी सिमिलर है कि वहाँ भी उन लोग डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स को बहुत बढ़ावा देते हैं और स्पेशल ट्रेनिंग देते हैं ताकि वो आगे जाके अच्छा खेले और बहुत से वर्ल्ड में कंट्रीज है उनके प्लेयर्स है जिनको डिफेंसिव प्लेयर के साथ खेलने की टेक्निक इतनी नहीं मालूम क्योंकि उनके साथ खेलने की प्रैक्टिस करने की उनको मौका बहुत कम मिलता है तो इसका एडवांटेज ये कंट्रीज को जरूर मिलता है यस मीना ओके I will come now to the, I think, the most important part of my presentation, because um, uh, let's see. Um, in my eyes, there are two possibilities to uh, uh, teach players to play against them. Uh, first possibility is to get. Uh, and sparring partner from somewhere and uh, uh, like implanted in the group you can do it on the uh, on the level of national team for example i remember when we with dutch team were practicing in hong kong a national center and uh, at this moment uh, uh, Li Ho Ching, uh, Bo Hui Ken, they were not really good at this moment against the fans Uh, the uh, Hong Kong Federation uh, got very good Chinese defender, the defensive player who were living in the center for some years, so the girls uh, were able to practice against them. This is expensive and not very now nah, it is sufficient way, but maybe only for the national teams. Other way is to bring defenders up themselves at home in your own clubs. In your own groups, this is, uh, I think, the most sufficient way to raise amount of defenders. And uh, if you have defenders, you will definitely have the attacking players who would be able to play against them because they would learn. So, if uh, for the coaches who work working with uh, children. I always, uh, when I'm uh, doing, uh, 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 giving um, uh, presentations, I always get a question, but how do you know who is going to be defender? How do you choose? So that's why I made this uh, page. Uh, there are, in my eyes, uh, four, Uh, at least four uh, important uh, criteriums which can define a defender. But while you are choosing, do you, uh, I'm, am I making in, uh, this child a defender or not? Uh, mental uh, mental uh, qualities and, and uh, environment, environmental qualities are the most important. Physical part you can develop later. Uh, intelligence, uh, you need to have these qualities at the beginning, but still you can develop them, make them better later. 
So, uh, I would start with environmental uh, qualities because this is the first thing which you see as a coach when uh, you, you see the young players. Uh, some children that do enjoy staying close to the table and trying to hit the ball hard and uh, trying to make a point as soon as possible. Uh, they're comfortable close to the table. Well, these children are not defenders. There are other uh, uh, children which are running away from the table and they don't have a nice time close to the table. So they're running back, trying to create time and then trying to put as much as possible balls on the table. I think if for the coaches who are working with uh, children, they will recognize that. Uh, so these children who are comfortable with longer distance for table, they're potential defenders. They need and like space. This is important. Second thing, which is maybe the most important, this is the mental part. Uh, I guess most of defenders, they are born with sort of allergy for making unnecessary mistakes. They are trying to put ball on the table. This quality is very, very difficult to develop. You have it or you don't have it. Uh, so, like I, uh, like you can see in uh, on this page by my by the mental part, patience, patience, patience. This is a yeah trademark of defenders. Resist resistant to mistakes, like repeating to perfection. I guess uh, uh, well, there is no other way. For defenders, we have to repeat, we have to bring ball to the table. So these sort of qualities, they have to be maybe not to develop them to the uh, better, uh, uh, to make them better, but you have to have them in you. We have to like keeping ball in the play and let opponents make mistakes. So this environmental and mental part, they have to be already in the child if you want to make defender out of him. Uh, physical. Well, I, I, I see I say uh, perseverance. Uh, well, I guess that this is uh, more mental. I think I put it in the wrong <laughs> chapter, but uh, this is very, very important. Keep fighting till the end. Uh, this is important for attackers, but definitely much more important for defenders. Okay, physical. Endurance. Uh, we can develop it later, but uh, still, a uh, child who you think should be a defender, he has to be uh, uh, have, has to be ready to practice uh, endurance. Flexibility. You can develop it a little bit better later, but still it has to be in you because uh, I see good defense players as a moving big cats, so flexible and gracious they are. Explosive and speed power. We need that as well because modern defense is a uh, yeah, combination of defense and attack. But again, all these physical qualities, they are less important than mental and environmental because you can develop them later. Uh, intelligence. You know, uh, most of the table tennis players are very intelligent, but sometimes, occasionally, I knew attacking players who were maybe not, not the most cleverest, but still very good player, players. I don't know any dumb defender. It is impossible with this style of game, because we need to have an uh, overview of the table, uh, with technical strong, we have to be the 
one who is anticipating the ball first, we have to predict what opponent is doing. And of course, uh, because of the rubbers and because of uh, constant innovation in table tennis, uh, we have to do that as well. And why it is, you, you probably would say this is important for attackers as well. Yes, of course, but defenders in the match, they are dependent part because actually attackers, they are who are making the game and defenders, they are who are breaking the game. That's why you have to be extra clever, extra alert to be, yeah, to be able to break the game. Kamlesh, can you maybe yeah. translate? Yeah, thank you. Explain as well. Aapke saamne unho ne kaha hai ki aap ek coach hote huye aapko kis khiladi ko defender choose karna hai. ये एक बहुत बड़ा क्वेश्चन मार्क होता है और इसके पे हम सब और उसने बहुत क्लियरली कहा है कि ये जो स्लाइड है एक बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट है आप सबसे पहले उन्होंने एक एग्जांपल दिया कि अगर डिफेंसिव प्लेयर के सामने आपको माहिर बनना है कैसे खेलना उसके सामने तो कैसे हांगकांग का एग्जांपल दिया कि हांगकांग टीम के पास कोई चॉपर नहीं था उन्होंने अपने नेशनल टीम के प्लेयर्स को चॉपर के साथ सीखने के लिए उन्होंने चाइना से एक चॉपर को लाए वो एक तरीका है दूसरा है कि तुम खुद ही डेवलप करो अपने जो जो लॉन्ग टर्म है लॉन्ग टर्म है क्योंकि किसी भी प्लेयर को डेवलप करने में टाइम लगता है अभी ये किस तरह से हम प्लेयर कि ये खिलाड़ी हमारे के अंतर में आया है तो उसको किस तरह से आप ये सिलेक्ट कर सकते कि ये डिफेंसिव प्लेयर बनने के लिए इसमें क्वालिटीज है तो उस, उसमें चार क्वालिटीज लिखी हुई लेकिन में उसमें से उन्होंने मेंटल और एनवायरमेंट ये दोनों को ज्यादा जोर दिया जब आप सिलेक्शन करते हो जब आपको डिसाइड करना है कि कौन सा खिलाड़ी को हम डिफेंसिव प्लेयर खिलाएंगे तो वो ज्यादा इफेक्टिव रहेगा जल्दी सीख पाएगा तो उन्होंने कहा है कि एनवायरनमेंट पहले देखो कि जैसे कि आपके पास फैसिलिटीज क्या है अगर आपकी क्लब के पीछे जाने की जगह ही नहीं है तो आप डिफेंडर्स को डेवलप कर नहीं सकते इसलिए और दूसरा है कि वो प्लेयर्स को क्या अच्छा लगता है तो आपके दो टाइप के प्लेयर होते हैं जो कहीं प्लेयर होते हैं जो एकदम एग्रेसिव होते हैं और वो टेबल के नजदीक खेलना पसंद करते हैं और कहीं ऐसे होते हैं जो पेशेंस होते हैं पेशेंट जिसमें पेशेंस ज्यादा होती है और वो बॉल रखते हैं और रैली ज्यादा करते हैं और तो पीछे टेबल के पीछे जाके खेल के उसका अच्छा कंट्रोल दिखाते हैं और उनको अच्छा लगता है कि पीछे से खेले तो ये एक हिंट है ये ये आपको एक हिंट दे सकता है कि ये खिलाड़ी अगर उसको डिफेंसिव प्लेयर में हम कन्वर्ट करें या उसको डेवलप करें तो इसके लिए अच्छा रहेगा क्योंकि उसे वो ऑलरेडी वो चीज पसंद है तो उसे वो जो चीज पसंद होगी वो जल्दी सीख पाएंगे फिजिकल और इंटेलिजेंस भी इंपॉर्टेंट है लेकिन उनका मानना यह है कि ये एनवायरमेंट और मेंटल ये दो चीज पहले इंपॉर्टेंट है फिजिकल और इंटेलिजेंस जो है वो खेलते खेलते आप डेवलप कर सकते हैं एनवायरमेंट के बाद उन्होंने आज कहा है मेंटल के बारे में कि सबसे पहले जो मेन क्वालिटी डिफेंसर की होती है कि उसको लंबी लंबी रैली खेलनी पड़ती है हर एक पॉइंट के लिए एक अटैकिंग प्लेयर से ज्यादा मेहनत करनी पड़ती है जब दो अटैकिंग प्लेयर खेलते हैं तो रैली छोटी छोटी होती है और वर्ल्ड में ज्यादातर अटैकिंग प्लेयर्स होते हैं लेकिन जब चॉपर आते हैं तो हम देखते हैं कि रैलीज लंबी होती है उनकी मूवमेंट जो होता है वो डिफेंसिव प्लेयर को ज्यादा करनी पड़ती है तो एक मेन क्वालिटी जो डिफेंसिव प्लेयर में होनी जरूरी है वो है पेशेंस 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 मतलब उसको एकदम उसको पॉइंट ओपोनेंट को मिस्टेक करवाना है अपने परफेक्शन करने है अपनी स्ट्रोक्स की लॉन्ग रैलीज के लिए तैयार रहना है कीपिंग द बॉल ऑन प्ले और उस पॉइंट तभी जीतते हैं ज्यादातर जब ओपोनेंट मिस्टेक करते हैं तो इसके लिए उसको पेशेंस बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है और अपनी मिस्टेक्स कम करनी है ये दो है देन सेकेंड पॉइंट ऑफ फिजिकल के बारे में उन्होंने कहा है बहुत अच्छा कहा है कि उसमें जो फर्स्ट पॉइंट है परसिवरम से मेंटल में भी आपको एप्लीकेबल होता है और एक जो होता है डिफेंसिव प्लेयर का जैसे मैंने कहा कि उनको बहुत लंबी रैलियां खेलनी पड़ती है तो फुटवर्क जो जितना अमाउंट वो टेबल पे कवर करते हैं डिफेंडर वो अटैकिंग से बहुत ज्यादा होता है इसलिए उसको सबसे पहले होता है एंड्योरेंस ये बहुत जरूरी डेवलप करना है जैसे जैसे प्लेयर बढ़ते जाएगा उसको एंडोरेंस उस तरीके से आपको बढ़ानी है कोई नेचुरल एंडोरेंस होते हैं कई लोग जिनको एंडो बट फिर भी उसको भी आपको अपग्रेड और बेटर करना पड़ता है जैसे वो प्लेयर का लेवल बढ़ता है वैसे एंडोरेंस लेवल की जरूरत भी बढ़ जाती है और तो हमें उसको डेवलप भी करना पड़ता है 
और आजकल सिर्फ चॉपिंग प्लेयर आप सिर्फ चॉप करके जीतते नहीं है उनको सडनली अटैक करते हैं और उनका अटैक भी बहुत अच्छा होता है और वो सरप्राइज एलिमेंट भी होता है और इफेक्टिव एलिमेंट भी होता है तो इसलिए आपको एक्सप्लोजिव पावर डेवलप करना है और स्पीड और दूसरी है फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी क्योंकि आपको बॉल एकदम तुरंत आती है और आपको लंबे जगह से करनी है रिटर्न करनी है और एकदम स्पेसिफिक जगह पे करनी है और अलग अलग बॉल आते हैं कभी शॉर्ट बॉल आती है लॉन्ग बॉल आती है स्लो अटैक आता है फास्ट अटैक आता है फ्लैट खिलाते हैं अलग अलग तो उनके लिए आपको फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी बहुत जरूरी है लास्ट होता है इंटेलिजेंस उनका ये कहना है कि डिफेंसर बहुत इंटेलिजेंट होते हैं क्योंकि उसको हर बार कितनी स्ट्रैटेजीज चेंज करनी पड़ती है शुरुआत में एक स्ट्रैटेजी होती है मिडिल ऑफ द गेम में दूसरी आती है अगर वो ओपन यूज टू हो जाता है तो फिर अपनी स्ट्रैटेजी पूरी चेंज करनी पड़ती है तो उनको बहुत चेंज करनी पड़ती है इसलिए उन्होंने कहा है कि डिफेंसिव प्लेयर में ज्यादातर उन्होंने जो देखे है वो इंटेलिजेंट ही होते हैं तो ये सारी चीज जो ओवर है एंटिसिपेशन है ये प्रैक्टिस करके आपको आप सीख सकते हैं और लास्ट पॉइंट इसमें यह कहा है कि टेक्नोलॉजी कि टेक्नोलॉजी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है अभी टेबल टेनिस एक ऐसी स्पोर्ट है जहां पर टेक्नोलॉजी ने बहुत बड़ा रोल प्ले किया है और लॉन्ग टर्म आपको मालूम है कि हर छह महीने में कहीं ना कहीं नए नए रबर आते हैं जिसके नए नए इम्पैक्ट होते हैं नए इफेक्ट होते हैं तो आपको टेक्नोलॉजी क्योंकि ज्यादातर चॉपर प्लेयर एक साइड तो वो लॉन्ग पिम्पल से जरूर खेलते हैं क्योंकि उससे वो वो टेक्निक की जरूरत है इसके लिए वो खेलते हैं और इससे उनको एडवांटेज भी मिलता है और ओपोनेंट को कंफ्यूज करने में उनको मौका भी मिलता है क्योंकि एक जगह वो इन्वर्टेड रबर से खेलते हैं और एक से लॉन्ग पीपल और इन्वर्टेड रबर वो अटैक सर्विस या तो वेरिएशन करने के लिए यूज करते हैं तो दो डिफरेंस उन्होंने बताया अटैकिंग प्लेयर इज मेकिंग अ पॉइंट इज प्लेस मेकिंग और डिफेंसिव प्लेयर ब्रेकिंग का है तो ये दोनों ऑपोजिट है और ये क्वालिटीज भी बहुत जरूरी है थैंक यू अलीना ओके सो नाउ वी नो हाउ टू चूज अ डिफेंडर बट देन कम्स अ नेक्स्ट स्टेप फ्रॉम माय एक्सपीरियंस मोस्ट ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन व्हेन यू सजेस्टिंग और ऑफरिंग देम अ पॉसिबिलिटी टू स्टार्ट प्रैक्टिसिंग डिफेंसिव स्ट्रोक्स दे डोंट वांट टू डू दैट बिकॉज well then uh, they find it quite stupid you know why they should do something that other are not doing well so at this moment uh motivation is very important how do you motivate them i have three suggestions maybe there are more uh, but uh i guess it is important to explain to the player whom you want to make a defender uh how special he is that he has a special qualities which other children or players don't have M- make him feel special make him uh, be proud of doing something different than others second one which is very important uh, i notice that especially in the countries where are not many defenders uh which uh in the one of uh, of these countries if you uh start playing defense style in the matches you will win a lot at the beginning because people to other other children would know how to play against you and uh, well in my opinion and experience winning is one of the biggest motivations which can exist and the third one social part uh, you know if you explain your player that he will make a very important part of the group of the club because he will help to make the club stronger and other players better this sort of social responsibility i think can help as well and uh, will motivate the player to improve the new style of the game इसके पहले वाले स्लाइड में हमने देखा कि अगर डिफेंसिव प्लेयर को किस तरह से हम सिलेक्ट कर सकते हैं और क्या क्या क्वालिटीज उसमें होनी चाहिए अगर सम कई क्वालिटीज नहीं है तो भी कोई नहीं उसमें दो मेन क्वालिटीज पहले बताइए जो एक गाइडिंग फैक्टर हो सकता है हमारे और इसमें अभी आपने सिलेक्ट कर लिया उसके बाद क्या जब वो बच्चा आपकी इनका एक्सपीरियंस कहता है कि किसी नए बच्चे को अगर आप डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स पे डेवलप करने के लिए जब 
बताते हैं कहते हैं तो सबसे पहले तो वो एक्सेप्ट नहीं करता उसको लगता है कि जब बाकी लोग नहीं कर रहे तो मैं क्यों करूँ और ये एक्सपीरियंस शायद आप कोचिज को भी वही होगा तो ये स्टार्टिंग में बहुत मुश्किल है किसी को डिफेंसिव प्लेयर के लिए उसको मनाना या उसको राजी करना तो उनका ये सुझाव है कि सबसे पहले तो वो बच्चे को ये दिखा बताना है कि वो एक स्पेशल है इसलिए से आपको स्पेशल अटेंशन भी शायद देना पड़े उसे और वो ये वो करे जो बाकी लोग नहीं करते तो वो एक डिफरेंट है और इम्पोर्टेंट है जो तो ये मोटिवेशन ये डायरेक्ट आप जिस तरह से ट्रीट करते हो इसमें बहुत निर्भर करेगा उसको ये बताओ कि इस कर, ये करने से आप एक स्पेशल हो गए आप सबके झूठ में नहीं है लेकिन यू आर समथिंग डिफरेंट दैट इज वन दूसरी बात है कि जब जॉब आप उसे मनाते हैं और उसको ट्रेन करते हैं तो शुरुआत में वो बहुत मैचेस जीतते हैं क्योंकि तो इंडिया में खास करके डिफेंडर्स बहुत ही कम गिने चुने मतलब जूनियर लेवल पर तो शायद एक आधी होंगे तो जो ओपोनेंट है उनको डिफेंस के साथ कैसे खेलना उसका एक्सपीरियंस या तो प्रैक्टिस एंड एक नॉलेज ही नहीं है और टेक्निक भी नहीं होती क्योंकि हम अटैकिंग प्लेयर के साथ खेलाते हैं तो अटैकिंग प्लेयर्स की टेक्निक डेवलप होती है तो इसे शुरुआत में वो आ, मैच जीतते हैं और ये उनका मानना है कि सबसे बेस्ट मोटिवेशन किसी भी को देना है किसी भी एज को अब चाहे वेटर्न ले लो चाहे नॉर्मल प्लेयर ले लो वो तो है जो मैच जीतते हैं दैट इज द बेस्ट मोटिवेशन उससे बेटर मोटिवेशन और कोई भी तो ये एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है जब वो मैच जीतते हैं तो उसका कॉन्फिडेंस बढ़ता है बढ़ता है और बिलीव बढ़ती है लेकिन इसके बाद जब लोग भी यूज टू होने लगेंगे तो मुश्किल ही आती रहेंगी तो उस वक्त उसको ये समझना कि मैच जीतना तो इम्पोर्टेंट है डेफिनेटली मोटिवेशन है बट वो एक एंड नहीं है उसको आगे बढ़ना है तो उनको ये दिखाना है कि तो आप पूरे क्लब के लिए पूरे टीम के लिए आप किस तरह से इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट खेल सकते हो जब आप डिफेंसिव प्लेयर बनते हो ये सबसे मुश्किल पार्ट भी होता है बट इसमें आपको मेहनत एक्स्ट्रा मेहनत लेके उन बच्चों को एजुकेट करना है इम्पोर्टेंस टाइम लगता है इट इज नॉट कि एक बार आपने बोल दिया हो जाएगा इसके लिए आपको बार बार करते रहना Yes, Selina. Thank you. Okay, so now we are so far. So we've chosen a person who is going to be defender. We motivated him. Now, how we are going to train him? First, technique. Uh, I will go where I think we are coming in. But uh, we, we have enough time, Kamlesh. Yes, yes, uh, no problem. Yes, we have time because it is such a complex subject. And no, no, no. This okay. is subject which not many can even speak. You are a master in it, and we would love. <laughs> Thank Please you. Go. So, uh, technique. First, what you should start with working with defender. You have to teach him how to push without mistakes. A uh, defender who is making unnecessary. mistakes with push is not a defender in my eyes second touching the ball in front of the body line with defense strokes uh, maybe i can show you can see my arm body line body line if it's turning body line is turning as well so basically you need to hit the ball with both strokes and with backhand and with forehand in front of your body so if you're turning you taking ball here if you turn it you still taking ball in front of the body line because um, a lot of coaches who are watching the videos of defenders they see really long strokes of asian defensive players and then they try to imitate these strokes working with their players but then they hit the ball behind the body The thing is, if you look closely to the videos with the uh, Asian defenders, you can see that they make a longer strokes than the European defenders. But their footwork and the work of their hips is so perfect that they are in time to get behind the ball, make a long movement, but still hit the ball in front of the body line. This is crucial because every time if you hit the ball behind the body line, there is no control on the ball. Okay, the second one. It's important to teach your pupils quite early already 
to use the material impulse. There is different ways of using of different impulse. You have to find out it for yourself. But in general, if you choose to use a long pimples, you have to learn to brush more, to use the pimple, let the ball go through the pimple, through the rubber, and just have a longer contact with the ball. With the short pimples, contact with ball is shorter, more explosive. You have to find out it for yourself, and uh, um, well, try to learn, try to uh, uh, make, make some sort of investigation for yourself what this material, what your material, your pimples are able to do. This is like a uh, long way. Uh, I was playing, for example, with different sorts of faint long starting from Fein Long and finishing with Fein Long 3 for, uh, well, I think almost 40 years. And I have to say, in these 40 years, I kept finding new qualities of this actually quite simple rubber. It is, uh, yeah, it is a way, it is a road to learn your material. Next thing. Very important to use the wrist actively. You know, wrist has to go all the way if you want to make a proper stroke. And at the beginning of the movement and at the end of the movement. Uh, defenders, don't stop your movement by using uh, lower arm. You need to use, use your wrist and as soon as uh, soon as you start using your wrist actively, as, uh, yeah, as more time you have to develop uh, this movement. Changing effects. Well, this obvious, uh, this is a breath of defender. Uh, trying to make the attacker to make mistakes, you have to use different effects. Dead balls, backspin, side spin. Perfect placement. From the very beginning, uh, when you try to, uh, you know, train the defender, put an, uh, like a mark the uh, places on the table with an uh, with an uh, tape or the different, or put the towel on, on the table just to uh, uh, make uh, the small, uh, like to mark the places where you want. Uh, yeah, when you want the ball to arrive, because uh, this is like like I said, for attackers placement is very very diff, diff, uh, important, but for defender is just essential. Uh, like I said, because you're dependent on the strokes of uh, your opponent, you want to prevent attacker to kill the ball. We have to learn to play in different tempos by taking the ball early or later. And uh, of course, of course, uh, it's almost last, but definitely not least. The modern defense without attack is uh, just impossible. It's by men uh, defenders, male defenders, well, most of the balls which are coming to Falkland, they're taken over the stop spin. Uh, the uh, modern female defense is as well, I would think, 70% defense, 30% attack, especially with new plastic balls, which are not coming, which are hanging a little bit higher and which have less spin. I would advise to the coaches not only to teach their pupils to use forehand top spin, to make an uh, overspin when top spin is coming to forehand or to spin it back. Well, it is very, very efficient for defender to use smash. And while I see that many defenders are using forehand smash, 
uh, I would advise try to learn backhand smash as well because if you're coming from the playing the relish far away from the table and you're coming to the short ball which is suitable for attack uh, physiologically and like an, uh, motorically it is easier to come with a backhand smash just because backhand smash needs less space and less time and the last point of technical service which well, te technical uh, aspect which you need to practice from the very beginning when you work with defenders receive of the service uh, this has to be perfect to, to prevent the attacker to make a uh, strong opening which would put you in uncomfortable position and uh, yeah which you put you in an uncomfortable position and which would prevent you to get in your own tempo and get into the rally. Uh, Kamlesh, would you please yeah. translate it? It's sure. a lot of information. No, no, I think you have very nicely put it, very point to point. Really, thank you so much. Yeah. In this slide, you have said that you have motivated a young girl, you have prepared her, so you have to focus on which things you have to pay less to pay less. If you have a very good point on the screen, you will have to understand a lot of people. So, I will talk about every point in a short way. One is that push is a very basic stroke, but it is a very essential stroke for the chopper. And you have to do it as much as you have to do it. And one way to master it is practice, practice, practice with patience. And for that, this is the first point of push. The second thing is, कहाँ आपको लेना है पुश करते वक्त तो हमेशा बॉडी के आगे लेना है तो बोलते हैं आप एशियन जो होते हैं जो एशियन प्लेयर्स हैं वो जिसकी वीडियो हमको ज्यादातर देखने मिलती है क्योंकि एशिया में ज्यादातर चॉपर प्लेयर्स ज्यादा है यूरोप के कम है तो वो प्लेयर्स का और यूरोपियन प्लेयर्स का टेक्निक में फर्क है और ये एडवाइस लीना हमारे इंडियन प्लेयर्स के लिए देती है ये समझ के क्योंकि जो एशियन जैपनीज चाइनीज कोरियन है वो एक्स्ट्रा फिट है बहुत फिट है उनकी मूवमेंट बहुत फास्ट है और बहुत कड़ी मेहनत करते हैं इसके लिए उनको लॉन्गर एक्शन करने के बावजूद भी वो सही पोजीशन में आते हैं लेकिन हमारे लिए जो एडवाइस दिया गया है तो फॉलो द शॉर्टर एक्शन क्योंकि हमारी फिजिकल फिटनेस लेवल इतनी नहीं है तो ये उनका एक रेकमेंडेशन है लेकिन ये आपको खुद को फाइंड आउट करना है थर्ड पॉइंट बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट जो क्वेश्चन बहुत से चैट में आए भी है वो इक्विपमेंट के बारे में उन्होंने यह बहुत अच्छी तरह समझाया है कि एक चॉपर एक साइड लॉन्ग टिम्पल खेलते हैं और एक साइड इनवर्टेड खेलते हैं और यही एडवाइजेबल है सबके लिए और लॉन्ग टिम्पल आपको बहुत वैरायटी के लॉन्ग टिम्पल मिलते हैं आपको ये चुनना है कि आपके लिए कौन सा ज्यादा सूट होता है आप कौन सी अच्छी तरह से कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं और यूज कर सकते हैं ये ऐसा कोई फिक्स ये नहीं है कि यही रबर आपके लिए अच्छा होगा उनकी खुद की करियर में भी उन्होंने कम से कम पांच डिफरेंट डिफरेंट लॉन्ग टिम्पल रबर चेंज किए हैं और एक्सपेरिमेंट क्योंकि टेक्नोलॉजी भी चेंज होती है तो आपको ये चेंज करते रहना चाहिए और आपको चेंज करना चाहिए और पिंपल आपको जब आप सिलेक्ट करते हैं तो बी प्रिपेयर कि आप उसके पहले सोच विचार करें इन्वेस्टिगेट करें और यूज करें रिस्क उसमें चांसेस होते हैं कि कहीं सूट हो कहीं आपको ना सूट हो ये भी हो सकता है तीसरी बात है कि व्रिस्ट को यूज करना है तो व्रिस्ट यूजेज जो है वो आप जैसे जितना जल्दी अपने प्लेयर को सिखाएं तो वो स्टार्टिंग से यूज करना शुरू करेंगे तो जैसे जैसे वो प्रैक्टिस करेगा उसकी ये इफेक्टिवनेस और कंट्रोल बढ़ेगा और ये एक्टिवली यूज करना है नॉट ओनली बीच में पॉइंट ऑफ कॉन्टेक्ट करें लेकिन स्टार्टिंग ऑफ द एक्शन से लेके एंड ऑफ द एक्शन तक और चेंजिंग इफेक्ट ये वो कहते हैं कि बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है ये जो सांसे है जो डिफेंसिव प्लेयर की क्योंकि आपको बहुत रैलीज करनी पड़ती है तो आप सेम सेम रैली करते रहेंगे तो ओपनर बहुत जल्दी यूज्ड टू हो जाएगा और उसका एडवांटेज में उसको मिलेंगे आपका आपके लिए डिसएडवांटेज हो जाएगा तो इसलिए वेरिएशन बहुत प्रैक्टिस करनी है और प्लेस परफेक्ट प्लेसमेंट होनी चाहिए दो चीज के लिए कैसे आप इसको डेवलप करेंगे एक तो प्रैक्टिस नंबर वन दूसरा है टारगेट प्रैक्टिस आप अलग अलग जगह पे बॉल टारगेट्स रखिए आप कप रख सकते हो बॉल टूटे हुए बॉल रख सकते हो टॉवल रख सकते हो नेपकिन रख सकते हो बहुत सी अलग अलग बॉल बॉक्स भी रख सकते हो 
और वो आपको वहां पे वो टारगेट को मारना है या तो उसको टच करना है तो ये टारगेट प्रैक्टिस बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है जिससे वो प्लेयर भी मोटिवेट होता है इंटरेस्टिंग रखती है और उसकी कंट्रोल और प्लेसमेंट बढ़ती है और ज्यादातर डिफेंसिव प्लेयर 70 परसेंट डिफेंस करते हैं और 30 परसेंट अटैक करते हैं और वो भी मेजोरिटी प्लेयर्स उन्होंने देखा है कि वो फॉरेन टॉस्पिन पे ज्यादा जोर देते हैं फॉरेन टॉस्पिन ज्यादा यूज करते हैं लेकिन उनको उनका ये सजेशन है कोचेस के लिए कि आप बैक एंड टॉस्पिन और बैक एंड स्मैश भी उनको डेवलप कीजिए उसमें एक एडवांटेज ये है कि जब आप पीछे होते हो और बॉल जब शॉर्ट आती है थोड़ी ऊंची तो बैक एंड से आपकी जिस तरह से स्टांस होती है डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स की बैक एंड स्मैश इजियर होता है और आपको शॉर्टर एक्शन की जरूरत पड़ती है जगह स्पेस कम जरूरत पड़ती है तो वो ये डेवलप करना काफी अच्छा भी होगा और एक सडन स्ट्रोक भी हो सकता है और लास्टली उन्होंने रिसीविंग के बारे में कहा है कल मसीमो ने हमारे लिए रिसीविंग के लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट टिप्स दी है और यहाँ पे डिफेंसिव प्लेयर जो ओपोनेंट की एरर्स पे देखते हैं और अटैकिंग प्लेयर हमेशा थर्ड बॉल स्ट्रॉन्ग अटैक की प्रैक्टिस में होते हैं तो उनके लिए एक स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉइंट हो जाता है और डिफेंसिव प्लेयर के लिए यही स्ट्रॉन्ग पॉइंट को उसको इतना अपॉर्चुनिटी ओपोनेंट को नहीं देना है जो रिसीविंग अगर आपकी अच्छी होगी तो वो पहला अटैक जो आप नजदीक टेबल के होते हो तो आपको टाइम कम होता है पीछे जाने के लिए इसीलिए फर्स्ट रिसीविंग बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है नहीं तो आप ओपनेंट की एकदम स्ट्रॉन्ग अटैक आ जाएगी तो आपके लिए आप पहले से बहुत डिसएडवांटेज में आ जाएंगे यस अलीना ओके Oh, uh, that's it. <laughs> here you go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just about to call for my daughter. <laughs> okay, food work. Uh, little, there is a difference. The, the difference in exercise which our defenders are uh, doing, trying to develop their food work, that they're, they're different to the exercise which attackers are doing. Well, there are many, many exercises, but I think they are uh, probably the subject for the practical uh, like lecture. But there are some uh, uh, general things. You have to get your body behind the ball. Uh, it means that try to avoid the situation when uh, you have to stretch your arm to the ball. Uh, you have to try to get to stay compact because uh, so it means uh, because defenders they have to cover bigger distance than attackers do because they're further away from the table you have to make much more steps just to try to get behind the ball and get the biggest control possible of your body and of your arm try to hit the ball perfectly. Uh, like I said, because we have to cover bigger distance than attackers, we have to stay very low, very low, like uh, as, as low as possible. Shoulders uh, leaning a little bit forward. This is the way to, uh, to uh, be in balance and don't, yeah, don't, don't lose the balance covering the uh, bigger distance. You have to practice a lot of forward and backward movements. Short ball and quick, uh, quick movement backwards without failing back with your back. Just staying, like I said, low with your, with your legs and keeping shoulders and uh, body weight the direction forward. This is not easy. That's for this. Uh, I would advise to do a lot of uh, butterfly exercises, like short to forehand, deep to backhand, short to backhand, deep to forehand. Or, for example, short anywhere, the whole table, deep ball in middle. This sort of movement uh, exercises. Uh, they are. Uh, uh, you, you can do it with a good sparring partner, but I think uh, the best way to uh, do food work with defenders is a multiple, uh, a, a multiple training, especially because it is difficult uh, 
if you're playing with a, a like a sparring partner, it's very difficult to keep uh, rallies long enough because, uh, yeah, sparring partner would make mistakes and defender has to be ready to keep moving compactly and staying very low for long period of time because rallies are much longer. Middle ball. Middle balls, this is a subject separate subject in uh, <laughs> in uh, life of defender this is the worst place possible for defender uh, just basically because you don't know what to use backhand or forehand it's it, and uh, then you have to, re to react very quickly and moving to this ball staying very compact and using very short uh, step with the leg because you have no time to make proper step and make a proper uh, movement with your legs you have to use your hips more actively trying to create the space to make a short compact movement with your arm these are the most hated balls in the practice and most of defenders at the beginning trying to avoid this sort of exercises but this is exactly the reason why you have to practice them more. And another thing, multi-ball training. Uh, you know, and attackers and defenders, all table tennis players are using multi-balls enormously much at this moment. But I think that uh, it is good for defender maybe even give 50% of your practice time doing multiples for one reason just to keep the rallies longer and not only practice your technique and footwork but as well an endurance which you need so there are good exercises using two tables so you have to move even extra more you can do it on one table you can combine there are thousands of exercises and you can start with very simple one like uh, repeatedly give the same ball almost in the same place and defend it just playing only forehand uh, chop or backhand chop but then you can work on the perfect moment of touching the ball and making sure that you don't make mistakes then you can do, like I said, uh, food, uh, food work practice uh, with moving forward and backwards to the left, to the right, to the middle, and combination of defense and attack. Multiples are very strongly advisable. Kamlesh. Yeah, thank you. Uh, very well explained. Uh, one is about footwork, how to develop footwork right from beginning so that they can oh, look. Sorry, I have to say, say that in Hindi. Uh, footwork किस तरह से uh, करना है तो footwork आपको जो भी training करनी हो पहले से शुरू करनी और footwork पे बहुत ज़्यादा जोर देना है एक है कि हमेशा ये सोचना है कि जब भी आप कोई stroke खेलते हो तो आपकी body पूरी ball के पीछे है यानी आप बहुत stretching यानी ball हाथ लंबा कर दिया और तो आप out of position हो जाएंगे तो ये practice करनी है कि आपके foot use your foot अगर आपको body पीछे लानी है तो आपको जैसे सत्यन ने भी बहुत कहा था फुटवर्क के बारे में अटैकिंग प्लेयर के लिए भी होता है लेकिन अटैकिंग प्लेयर के फुटवर्क जो होती है वो डिस्टेंस छोटे होते हैं लेकिन डिफेंसिव प्लेयर को ज़्यादा डिस्टेंस कवर करना पड़ता है तो उसको ज़्यादा मूवमेंट चाहिए उसको ज़्यादा स्ट्रेंथ चाहिए ज़्यादा एंडोरेंस भी चाहिए क्योंकि रैली उनको लंबी के लिए पड़ती है मूवमेंट ज़्यादा करना पड़ता है दूसरी बात सेकेंड पॉइंट कि बैंड करके खेलना है आपको जितना बैंड करके आप खेलेंगे जितना लो रहेंगे तो और शोल्डर फॉरवर्ड बॉडी फॉरवर्ड रहेगी तो आपकी बैलेंस अच्छी रहेगी और आप फास्ट मूव कर पाएंगे अगर आप बैकवर्ड आपकी बॉडी वेट बैकवर्ड होगा तो आपको बैलेंस हो जाएगा और आप आउट ऑफ पोजिशन हो जाएंगे और आपकी मूवमेंट स्लो हो जाएंगी एंड दैट इज नॉट गुड दूसरा है कि इसमें अटैकिंग प्लेयर को ज़्यादातर हम साइडवेज मूवमेंट ज़्यादा कराते हैं लेकिन यहाँ पे डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स को फॉरवर्ड बैकवर्ड बहुत ज़्यादा करना पड़ता है क्योंकि उनको शॉट भी आती है लंबी बॉल आती है वो सडनली तो फॉरवर्ड बैकवर्ड मूवमेंट ज़्यादा करती है 
तीसरा है कि ये मिडिल बॉल के बारे में ये अलग ही सब्जेक्ट उन्होंने कहा है और ये मिडिल बॉल सिर्फ चौपर्स के लिए नहीं बट अटैकिंग प्लेयर्स के लिए भी मिडिल बॉल किस तरह से करना है क्योंकि इसमें एक एडवांटेज होता है जब बॉल तेज आती है मिडिल में तो हमें ये नहीं मालूम पड़ता है हम क्लियर नहीं होते कि फॉरन से खेले या बैक से खेले इसलिए वो टाइम निकल जाता है और सेकेंडली उसके लिए मूवमेंट बहुत क्विक और फास्ट होनी चाहिए तो सिमिलरली डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स के लिए भी ये मूवमेंट आपको बहुत शॉर्ट मूवमेंट करना है लेकिन क्विक मूवमेंट करना है तो आपको पोजिशन में आना है फॉरन से लेना है बैकहेंड से जो भी लेकिन उसके लिए दोनों तरीके से आपको प्रैक्टिस करनी पड़ेगी बैकहेंड से भी लेते प्रैक्टिस करनी पड़ेगी और फॉरन से भी लेने की प्रैक्टिस करनी पड़ेगी और बेस्ट है कि आप स्पेरिंग पार्टनर से खेलते ही हो सभी तो वो तो सब लोग खेलते हैं अटैकिंग प्लेयर्स भी खेलते हैं डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स लेकिन डिफेंसिव प्लेयर के लिए उन्होंने ये कहा है कि अगर आपको उनको ट्रेन करना है तो 50 परसेंट आप स्पेरिंग पार्टनर के साथ खेलाइए और 50 परसेंट मल्टी बॉल कराइए मल्टी बॉल आप सब जानते हैं कैसे करना है उसमें बहुत सी वेराइटी ऑफ कॉम्बिनेशन आप डेवलप कर सकते हो उसका एक एडवांटेज होता है मल्टी बॉल से और अलग स्पीड अलग पावर से आप दे सकते हो और ये मल्टी बॉल ट्रेनिंग से दो फायदा होते हैं कि ये प्लेयर की फुटवर्क इम्प्रूव होता है एंड्योरेंस बढ़ जाता है और स्किल बढ़ते हैं और परफेक्शन बढ़ता है और लॉन्गर रैलीज के लिए वो जो पेशेंस चाहिए वो भी बढ़ जाती है और मल्टीपल ट्रेनिंग के अलग अलग तरीके हैं आपको अगर ज्यादा टफ बनाना है तो दो टेबल रखिए उनके जो प्लेयर के साइड पे और दो टेबल पे खेला जाता है कि उसको ज्यादा एरिया कवर करना पड़े तो मैच में आप एक में करेंगे तो दो टेबल पे अगर अच्छी तरह कर सकते तो एक टेबल पे आप आसानी से कर पाएंगे और उनका जोर मल्टीबॉल ट्रेनिंग पे बहुत रहा है इस बारे में थैंक यू अलीना यू कैन गो अहेड ओके आई वुड आई वुड ट्राई टू मूव लिटिल बिट क्विक फॉरवर्ड बिकॉज़ आई थिंक वी आर रनिंग ऑफ आउट ऑफ टाइम इट्स जस्ट टू बी क्विक टू कवर इट ऑफ ओके लाइक आई सेड बिफोर द गोल ऑफ डिफेंडर इन द मैच इज टू मेक द ओपोनेंट मेंटली एंड फिजिकली एग्जॉस्टेड सो एंड टू फोर्स द ओपोनेंट टू मेक मिस्टेक्स like i said already uh, before many times it's a difference with defender but what i didn't say before it was it is important for every defender to make create its own favorite pattern of game they uh, the, uh, the, they want to create their favorite situation in which they want to land in the game and how do you do that by using good receipt of the service for example or for the placing ball and then you forcing attacker to get in the pattern which is comfortable for you another thing immediate service attack combination this is a very good tactical uh, possibility this is the way this is one of the ways to win quick points uh, every good defender has one or two service immediate attack combination and another thing because we are dependent on the attackers we are dependent on their strengths their game plan it is very important to have plan b when you as soon as your favorite plan a is not working you have to switch to plan b and to have that to do that you have to do it before attacker change the uh, game plan you have to train the quick adjustment That's it. You can translate uh, Kamlesh if you want to. I'm just yeah. speeding up a little bit. Yes, correct. Uh, in a strategy or tactical training, के बारे में कहा डिफेंस की थोड़ी अलग होती है, but बेसिकली अटैकिंग प्लेयर के जैसे ही शुरू होती है वैसे ही होती है जैसे जब आप रिसीविंग करते हो तो आप अच्छी रिसीविंग इसलिए करते हो ताकि आप ओपनेंट को एडवांटेज ना दे और उसको फ्रस्ट्रेट करें तो इसी तरह डिफेंसिव प्लेयर को एक होता है कि अच्छी रिसीविंग करने से अब अच्छी अटैक नहीं कर पाते तो ऑब्वियसली सर्वर जो होता है वो फ्रस्ट्रेट होता है वो अपसेट होते हैं तो अपसेट करना है और लंबी रैली खेल के उसको एग्जॉस्ट करना है ओपनर को ये दो बेसिक मोटिव होते हैं ताकि जब वो एग्जॉस्ट हो जाते हैं फ्रस्ट्रेट हो जाते हैं अपसेट हो जाते हैं तो उसकी मिस्टेक्स बढ़ जाती है दूसरी ये कि अपनी सर्विस के बाद जनरली अटैक प्लेयर हमेशा ये सोच रहा होगा कि ये डिफेंस के लिए रेडी रहेगा लेकिन उस वक्त थर्ड बॉल अटैक जो होता है जैसे ओपनेंट अटैकिंग प्लेयर्स करते हैं उसी तरह डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स को भी थर्ड बॉल अटैक बीच बीच में सरप्राइज एलिमेंट करके करना चाहिए ताकि ओपनेंट हमेशा गैस करते रहे और सोचते रहे कि क्या है और कोई भी पैटर्न ये होता है कि कोई भी एक पैटर्न से आप मैच नहीं जीत सकते तो आपको हमेशा प्लान ए और प्लान बी रखना ही चाहिए चाहे वो अटैकिंग प्लेयर हो डिफेंसिव प्लेयर और इसके लिए जब भी आपको इम क्विक एडजस्टमेंट करना पड़े जैसे आपको लगता है कि आपकी स्ट्रेटेजी ओपनेंट समझ जाते हैं तो आपको इमीजिएटली दूसरी स्ट्रेटेजी करनी चाहिए ताकि वो हमेशा फिर 
कंफ्यूज मोड में रहे और ये सोचते रहे कि क्या आगे आने वाला है थैंक यू अली ओके आई विल आई वाज टॉकिंग ऑलरेडी फॉर अ वाइल अबाउट मेंटल सो आई विल नॉट गोइंग टू 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 टॉक अबाउट इट नाउ बिकॉज़ आई ऑलरेडी सेड क्वाइट अ फ्यू अबाउट दैट अबाउट चूजिंग द मटेरियल वेल द थिंक इज दिस इज अ टॉपिक फॉर डे कन्वर्सेशन so the only thing i wanted uh, it's too big you know so the only thing i wanted to show show you the slides are they good visible uh, these are the uh, uh, rubbers which uh, top 100 defenders at this moment are using so i, I will uh, the only thing you can you can look at uh, look it up on internet but the only thing i wanted to say the difference between the between 3 years ago uh, when i was doing similar presentation and i was uh, in, investigating the rubbers of defenders 3 years ago 50% of defenders of top 100 they were using long pimples now i think from all of these people who are now on the screen i think only two or three are using long people pimples others has switched to the short pimples and i think this is uh, the uh, the reason for that is the balls new balls and with long pimples you are more dependent on the uh, effect which you get and with short pimples you can create effect easily yourself and you can attack easily so i think this is the reason why that happened and again it is too big subject to uh, uh, like to stick it in uh, this presentation the last thing what i wanted to talk about defenders and uh, uh, this is there is uh, in general what i was saying this i was talking about defenders and generals what happens what makes you a high class defender what class defender this is the things which i uh, pointed uh, high class defenders they are very complete they have no weak points their uh, balance between attack and defense and uh, uh, movement and uh, they, they they're just perfect they have to be able to do everything you have to have a trademark what do i mean by trademark every great defender is has something significant that only this defender can do uh, for example uh, 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 the uh, uh, for example when i was working with liji i think she was the best defender in the world who can change the spin with her short pimples there are uh, for example gionis he has the i think one of the biggest forehand top spin there are things which uh, which makes you different from the others they trademark you have to improve constantly because like i said many times the defenders are dependent they are dependent on uh, what attackers are doing so as soon as attacker knows you then uh, you are not surprised anymore you every year i would suggest you need to come with something you which you didn't do before it can be small thing it can be bigger thing but you need to improve professors and studying their opponents again because we are dependent uh, de dependent on uh, opponent we need to learn we need to know her and best defenders they are doing their home work i think even better than the attacking attack players they just studying for hours their opponents innovation this is rubbers while it is very painful for some players to change the material i think i guess uh defenders have to think at least on changing their game by yeah changing the rubber sometimes just to keep surprise their opponents and the last and maybe the most important i call it creating a world uh, being able to create and create a mental world in the every match no in not in every match but in uh, important matches in the difficult matches 
it's always comes a moment when there's like a border moment do you break the mental uh, defense of attack uh, of your opponent or you, he will break you so there is a moment when they're both exhausted so long matches and sometimes this question of one or two points when you can break at, uh, your opponent uh, mentally and physically and i call it's creating a mental wall well in my experience when i was playing myself in my best matches at this moment i actually visualized the wall i visualized the wall and i pretending i was the wall so you cannot go through me everything every ball which comes to the uh, to defender at this moment just comes back and uh, i think the really high class defenders they have to be able to create this wall and just break uh, the opponents in the important moments that said that was uh, my defender part <laughs> presentation yes. <laughs> and uh, the last part it was very nice you have summarized it very well uh, what are the requirement one trademark was one uh, trademark ke bare mein jo unhone kaha hai bahut hi nahi hai ki har ek defense player ko aapko kuch ek special stroke aisa special service aisa se kaha jo wahi kar sakta hai jo something different ho aur wo uske strong point ho jati hai us pe develop karne ke liye aapko कोशिश करनी है और बाकी सब जो क्वालिटीज कहा है कि प्रैक्टिस कांस्टेंट इंप्रूवमेंट अपग्रेडेशन इनोवेशन चेंजेस पॉजिटिव रहना क्योंकि वो डिफेंसिव प्लेयर्स को लंबे लंबे रैली खेलनी पड़ती है तो उनको पॉजिटिव रखना बहुत जरूरी होता है अवर टाइम इज रनिंग आउट सो क्वेश्चन एंड इट वॉज वेरी नाइस एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन अबाउट रिगार्डिंग इक्विपमेंट एंड Yeah. because we didn't have time but uh, as soon as i will share my presentation the next page is actually wait uh, what i'm doing wrong uh, the next pages will be uh, there are two pages left which i will just share how to strategy okay. how to play against chopper so that you just the yeah, yeah, coach sure. can just read it yeah 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 no no it's, it's i think i think we have no time for that so we just have to uh they have to read it right yeah yeah maybe you can explain in short no issue short yeah well well th yeah, this sure, is sure. yeah well that's that's what uh, the, what you can see you know that th you have to build a stretch the, uh, against choppers knowing that uh knowing uh, if you want to win against chopper by playing the quick rallies and just trying to play play power it's not going to work you have to uh, the aim of playing against choppers is to force the defender to give you the big ball to high to short or to less spin and then you can kill this ball and uh then uh wait yeah that's it uh and there are some ways to do that but again uh, we don't have time now well, you so maybe we well, just... sure a lot of serious people would love to see it because you have you are the best person to actually tell us how to do that so please go ahead okay uh how to do that the uh you i just will read it you have to create basic skills by training you you have to be able to play long rallies uh, uh maybe not with super hard or super quick balls but just solid spinny balls uh without main, making any mistakes because uh if opponent makes unnecessary mistakes good defender is not afraid he knows he would win uh so some people who are choosing tactic you know try to play really hard balls and then making mistakes this is very easy for defender you have to learn in the practice to play long rallies okay. with steady balls okay 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 oh, uh, can i can i can i go can i go elena uh, you can go and this is a very important uh, aspect is how to play against defensive and i think it's very important you please go ahead and uh, say the way you would want it don't hurry because such knowledge we don't want to lose is opportunity of getting this knowledge from you thank you okay so like i said you, uh, this is basis this where you have to start with you cannot compensate it with anything else you cannot compensate it with uh, power or with speed you need to learn to play long rallies with a steady balls 
so, uh, you're doing it by making hours. It is impossible to learn how to play against defense without playing against them for many, many hours. And it's better if you play against different defenders because every different defender has different troubles. And uh, so you, uh, you will get different balls all the time. I don't think multi balls are uh, good enough uh, uh, because, uh, like I said, you create as attacker, you create the spin and defender just give the spin back, transforming it in yeah in, in some different effects. So it, it, you, as a multi ball trainer, you cannot create the effects which defender would give by replying on your spin. Is it clear what I'm saying? Absolutely yeah. clear. Okay. Uh, what is really underestimated in the practice against defense? Attackers don't like to practice push. They think it's stupid. Well, in my eyes, it's very, very stupid not to practice push against a defense. Because, uh, like uh, I said uh, before, defenders like to play the same tempo. You have to break tempos by playing push sometimes, by replacing the ball. And again, out my own experience as defender, as soon as attackers make and push mistakes, you know you can beat him. Uh, learning to change the tempo. This is essential. Combination of slow, maybe dead, sort of top spins, you know, lifting the ball and then playing a quicker ball. This is how you will beat defender, especially, uh, you know, defender is very comfortable when he's away of the table and just he's ready. So you can play harder and harder, but uh, it is really comfortable for defender. He's there, he's ready, he's just bringing your hard balls back to you and eventually uh, you know attackers would make mistakes by changing tempo you're getting the defender out of comfort zone then he's starting to uh, instead of automatically bringing ball back he has to think he has to move he has to adjust which is difficult learning to change effect that ball with spin this is a classic that ball half long, such as lifting half toes can ball to forehand in case the defender plays with the normal rubber with forehand. Not to the pimples, with pimples it's easier to get this ball, but to the normal rubber. This half long ball, this is the worst ball possible for the defender because uh, you have to. Uh, Defender is staying far away from the table, and then he gets a dead, half dead, half long ball to forehand. You have to get to this ball. Most of the time, you are too late to get to this ball perfectly. And then, because this dead ball doesn't have any spin in it, you have to do everything yourself. You have to give a power and spin to the ball, which is very, very difficult. It's much easier to use the spin than to create it yourself for defender. Then very often this ball would be played a little bit higher, a little slower, and a little bit uh, shorter. And this ball, you know, after this half back to fork, is easier to kill. Service. Well, that's another possibility. If you don't want to play all the time the long rallies against defender, you can try to uh, get him out of position by good service and then first top skip. This is a possibility, especially in the long matches when you as a tech are getting really tired and you want to have a couple of short, uh, shorter rallies because you just, uh, yeah, you need a break. <laughs> so there are some possibilities like short service to forehand or long to the middle with good spin or speed or long dead service to pimples. They are very effective because, especially the last one, long dead service to pimples, because uh, it's very difficult to uh, 
you know, with pimples, you use the spin of uh, the opponent and spin. If there is nothing on the ball, it's very difficult to create something uh, with this ball, with your pimples. And then this ball is easier to attack. Uh, that was this slide. <laughs> very well uh, explained, uh, Elena. Really, you have covered almost, I was seeing too many questions, many of the people asked. I am sure what you said, if they have heard, they will get most of the answers out there. So, if once uh, you uh, is this your last slide or I mean is this is my last slide. This okay, is the fine. last slide. Okay. You well, go ahead. This, okay. Uh, so there are different possibilities in my eyes to win the point against the defender. One is the difficult one, uh, like physically difficult, but uh, yeah, you just can't avoid avoid it. If you didn't. Uh, uh, that my, uh, if, if defender got into the comfortable situation, got into the rallies, you have to play this long rest in the tempo. This would force the defender to give a higher or shorter ball, which is easy to smash. So this is long rallies, but you cannot play this rallies like the steady tempo. You have to disturb the defender. Second, Forcing the defender to move back and forward with combination of top spin and short push, looking for an attack deep in the corner or middle. This is very effective, but again, for that, you should be able not to make mistakes with push, for example. Middle, looking for the middle. Uh, in any rallies, in anything what you do against the defender, try to use the middle of the defender as often as possible because this is the weakest spot. Okay, there are other uh, service and first two balls, some variation, and there are many, but I will not mention some. Short service to forehand, slow, safe topspin to forehand. This, this ball is very difficult to receive good and then top, uh, deep topspin to backhand. Short service, topspin, uh, topspin anywhere, and then the third ball in the middle. Or short service, topspin in the middle, and uh, topspin anywhere. Uh, one thing which I would advise, try to use the backhand topspin against the fence because it is uh, qua coordination, it's more difficult for defenders to receive backhand topspin. By the way, uh, defenders are not trained very often to receive the backhand topspin. And the last one, uh, work on your smash because uh, the, uh, it is more difficult for defender to receive smash than topspin. That's what I wanted to share with you. It was fantastic, Alina. You have covered each and every point, and I am sure if uh, the coaches, uh, yes, there's a video. Let us watch the video first. Please, this is this is one rally which is actually covering. Yeah. Everything. Every, only one rally, but in one rally, you can see everything. I was talking for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> you have done a wonderful job. I think I've done something. Oh, okay. Let's step up. That's it. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. That was a superb rally which covers everything that you have explained. Yes. <laughs> of course, we will share it with our uh, participant. Participants, uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us. And there's, there's a really very 
a deep technical talk on how to develop defensive players and how to play against them. Both have very well covered by Elena Temina. Your time is Thank little you. running out and I have seen that most yeah. of the questions have been covered in your talk in the later slides which we have put earlier. Uh, one made, there are very many questions on equipment and you said that it's such a vast subject and uh, you have given options. And one important point which I heard about the from your this thing is that instead of long pimple, this short pimple is what a lot of choppers are using because they can create their own variations, which of course uh, con confuses the opponent. Whereas in long pimple, there are some restrictions on creating uh, variations. Uh, so, uh, first and foremost, uh, Alina, thank you very, very much for you, taking so much pain and coming and readily agreeing to share your knowledge, valuable knowledge with us. It's really going to help all the coaches train developing the defensive players in India, which will definitely make India a stronger table tennis playing nation. Uh, well, uh, Biswajit, I would uh, like to just thank once again Sports Authority of India and Table Tennis Federation of India and our evaluator Manju Sridhanan and the technical team, which is making it possible for us to be in this difficult time, share such fantastic knowledge on this common platform. Everybody, Thank you very much. Have a good day. Stay home. Stay safe.